Okay, Michelle. Amen. Doing bad or good. Hey, Pastor Hurst. Pastor John. Elder Alice. Elder Lewis. Sophie, love you too. Deacon Pat. Hershey 1988, Elder Nita, uh, First Lady Crystal. All right, that's the Thaddeus. I'm ready. Dr. Harbin, Timani, come on and invite some followers. Come on, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Come on here. How y'all been doing? While you're inviting your followers, while you're doing hearts, while you're doing all those kind of things, and I'm just doing my hellos, I apologize for yesterday. Um, that weather kicked me out of uh, the scope. Bless you, Hershey 1988. I was getting ready to, I left the house, it was raining. Hey, Pat Brown, it was raining, and I thought I prepared. I went about an hour later. And got out there in that rain and it blew my hat off, blew the umbrella off. Hey, Pastor Robin, blew the papers out my hand, blew everything. Uh, Death nap for us. Amen. Who is that? And I was a mess. I was a mess. Amen. Wait a minute, God fear nanny, uh, Timani. And I was like, I looked okay from this way, but from the back, it didn't look good. Okay, Deacon Anna. And so I just couldn't scope yesterday. So I apologize, but I'm here today. I'm here today. Hey, Myra, I saw something about $7,000. Who was that? Taimani? I didn't quite see who it was. It went by while I was trying to tell you my little story. So praise God for that praise report. Put it back up as I'm getting ready. Your debt was dismissed. $7,000. You better come on here. You better come on here. Hey, Larry, you're going to be on the Word Network at 830 Eastern Time tonight? That's Larry Whitfield, y'all. Ebenezer in the River, y'all know who that is. If you all don't know who it is, uh, Minister Larry Whitfield is off the chain. So the Word Network at 830 Eastern Time tonight. Let's watch Larry, my son. Amen. So I got to get on in here. I got a lot today. And, uh, you know, we've been talking about Joseph. Um, Pastor Thaddeus is ready for this teaching. Um, again, I don't preach a hoop, uh, but uh, I do try and give you a word that's going to help you in your life. And um, Nurse Hammond is not um, on here today. I think she's at work. She's already put a song request in. I'm like, oh my gosh, somebody put the rolling eyes emoji. But anyway, it's all good. But you know, in talking about Joseph, um, number one, we talked about part one. Uh, that you asked you the question, can you cope with being God's favorite? Can you cope with having the divine favor of God on your life? Part two was you can't share your dream with everyone. Uh, you can't share your dream with everyone. Part three was, are you jealous? Why are you jealous when I ain't got nothing yet? Amen. And then on uh, Saturday, I gave you a little pop-up scope. Add a little enhancement, a little bonus, if you will, uh, about being mindful um, that uh, trying to stay connected. With, I know, and I'm mad about it, too. I'm going to tell the apostle I'm mad about it. But anyway, Pastor Robin, uh, gave you this little bonus about uh, sometimes you may get shade, even from your mentor, even from your leader, but gave you some wisdom as to keeping your heart pure. Amen. Keeping your heart pure if you encounter that, because it is even part of the process. And so today, I'm still in Genesis, the 37th chapter. I didn't look at my time. Uh, Genesis, the 37th chapter, and I'm in the 12th verse. And I'm in, I think I'm in the New Living Translation. And it says, and his brothers, and his brothers went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said unto Joseph, do, do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem. Now, let me make sure I'm in the, um, no, I'm, the, I'm still in the King James Version. I want it to be in the New Living Translation. So let me go back to that right quick. Y'all come on here. All right. Hearts, hearts, hearts while I'm doing it. Hearts, hearts, hearts. Okay, let's go back. 12, 
12th verse, it said, Soon after this, Joseph's brothers went to pasture his father's flock at Shechem. When they had been gone for some time, Joseph said, Jacob said to Joseph, here we go. Jacob said to Joseph, your brothers are pasturing the sheep at Shechem. Get ready and I will send you to them. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go, was Joseph's response. Go and see how your brothers and the flocks are getting along. Joseph said, then come back. Joseph said, then come back and bring me a report. And so Jacob sent him on his way and Joseph traveled to Shechem from their home in the valley of Hebron. When he arrived there, a man from the area noticed them wandering around the countryside. What are you looking for? He asked. I'm looking for my brothers, Joseph replied. Do you know where they are pasturing their sheep? Yes, the man told him. They have moved on from here, but I've heard them say, let's go on to Dothan. So Joseph followed his brothers to Dothan and found them there. And the word of the Lord is already blessed. I'm talking to you. You know what I'm talking to you about. You saw my topic that obedience is the path to destiny. Hey, Pastor Sean Williams, obedience is the path to destiny. Obedience, the path to destiny. I want somebody to put obedience up. Come on here. Come on. Let me see obedience. I know y'all don't like the old word. Some of you, some of you don't like the old word. Come on, obedience. There we go, Elder Nita, Deacon Pat, Elder Lou, Def Nat for us. Come on. Come on, Myra. Come on, Michelle. Come on. Come on. I see you. Obedience. What is obedience? Obedience is compliance to an order, request, or law, or submission to another's authority. I'm going to say it again. Obedience is compliance to an order, request, or law, or submission to another's authority. Hey, precious jewels. Hey, that, that uh, Julia, I love you. Listen, if you miss the part of obedience, you're going to miss the whole ship. Obedience is key. Um, in Bible class, um, and of course in the River of Life Church and in Ebenezer, you know that we, it's a love thing around here. It's a love thing. And obedience, as I taught last night, um, we're, we're number one supposed to love ourselves, love God, love others, love our assignment. But we're also supposed to love righteousness. And uh, when you look at uh, um, Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, I want you all to look at that in your spare time. These are some blessings that I pulled out that you uh, uh, position yourself when you are in obedience, when you are operating in righteousness, which obedience is operating in the right thing. Because you don't want to be obedient. You don't want to be obedient to the wrong thing. Your uh, the assumption is is that you're going to be obedient to righteousness. And so in Deuteronomy the sixth chapter, it reveals some blessings to obeying the word of God. Number one, it said that obedience leads to possession. And I told the people of God, could it be that uh, some of us are broke, busted, and disgusted because we're not operating in obedience? Um, we're looking through our churches and all of us to put together. We can't hardly rub two uh, uh, wood nickels together sometimes because we are not in obedience. Obedience. Hey, Princess Florence, obedience causes us to move into the promise of God. It causes us to move into that blessed place of God. And so many times... Uh, uh, God has spoken to us. God has spoken to us through our leaders, through our mentors, and they tell us things. And then we want to say things like, oh, let me pray about it. Oh, let me see what I think about it. No, obedience is compliance to that order. And it moves you into the place of possession. Number two, obedience causes blessings to be passed on to your children and to your children's children. I told him last night, come on, give me some more hearts. I told him last night, that part of the problem with our children and not having any boundaries and any laws and we have not passed them down. We have not passed them down to them. And so they're kind of operating on their own where every man uh, does what is right in his own heart. 
And so it's necessary for us to teach our children. It's necessary for us to teach them even how to be obedient. They don't be obey the teachers. Uh, they don't want to obey the police. They don't want to obey uh, anybody. And then um, we wonder why they're in the shape that they're in. Because when we teach obedience and the instructions and the law and righteousness, it's passed down to our children's children. The other thing is, is obedience leads to long life. Obedience lead, leads to long life. Amen. And so we're seeing lives being cut short uh, uh, all the time. And many times because we are not even required of them the basic obedience to our parents. Uh, uh, honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long. And some of us allow our children to talk to us any kind of way. Um, allow them to talk. If they're going to talk to us any kind of way, they're going to talk to others any kind of way. And so uh, my kids, no, I don't think so. Because I have a golden fist that I will knock them to the next side of heaven if they are not respectful and if they are not obedient. Why? Because they will get out there and be an embarrassment to me. All right? Um, so it leads to long life uh, when you honor uh, leadership and when you honor in obedience and all your boss and all and Myra saying she ain't playing not playing with these kids are you serious anyway I don't care if they're 41 years old I just for real anyway so last thing is obedience causes things to go well with you and then it's not the last thing obedience brings increase obedience causes things to go well with you and obedience <laughs> brings increase that's right so when uh, we're looking at Joseph, we see that now he's told the dreams, it stirred up jealousy, um, his father is pondering the dream, and now his father gives him instructions. So here, Joseph, ha Joseph has an opportunity to comply with the request of his father, with the order of his father. And what does he say? He said, yes. I'm going. Here I go. None of that. Let me think about it. None pound about it. Oh, I ain't feeling that. All of this kind of stuff. He is obedient to his father. He goes and he searches for his brothers as his father has instructed him to do. People of God, whether it's your mentor, whether it's your father, whether it's your boss, whether it's your leader, whoever it is in this a sign new day. It is important that you are obedient. It's not a sign of weakness. Your little stubbornness won't get you anywhere. It is going to get you going. I put all the little emojis up there that represented movement, walking, flying, rolling. It gets you moving. When you operate in obedience, it pushes you closer to your divine destiny. When you're standing still or when you're operating in disobedience, it causes you to be stuck. So you got to ask yourself, am I stuck because I'm being disobedient? This thing moved Joseph right into the direction of his divine destiny. Now, here's the trick point as I get ready to close. You understand that his obedience led him to the place where they were going to throw him in the pit. Hello. Do you understand that him being obedient to going to search out his his brothers being obedient to the father led him to the place where he was going to be deceived by his own brothers, sold into slavery and thrown into the pit. So understand that your obedience does not always uh, result immediately in, in the possession, in the increase, in uh, those 